This is the Ken Barron Show, and we're calling the West Coast. Squire Friedel, good morning to you. Good morning, Ken. Go- oh, boy, as soon as I hear your voice, it's recognizable, just like that. Uh-oh. That's great, huh? Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. <laughs> I was talking earlier about uh, People Magazine. What did I do with the story here? People Magazine is doing a little uh, uh, business trying to uh, track down how popular certain nationally known people might be to uh, represent certain products and the like. you probably heard about this, right? Uh, no, I haven't. The Q score and stuff. It says People Magazine says it's signed a partnership deal with the uh, Yankovich Research Group to create a personality rating service to rate celebrities' appeal to TV viewers and moviegoers. I guess it would not only appeal for commercials, but for, for movies and the like. You have one of the most appealing approaches, I think, to commercials, and that's why you've sold almost everything, I would think. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How'd you get into that game anyway? I started uh, out as a teacher. I was teaching theater in a high school in Southern California, and um, I was working at a theater at night at South Coast Repertory, and uh, somebody literally came down to see a show and uh, said, you know, you ought to think about doing this professionally. So uh, it took me a while. I taught school for nine years, and uh, by that time I just didn't have enough time to teach anymore. I was taking time off to to do my acting. Yeah. Television stuff, and then uh, somehow ended up doing commercials. And now you're a writer, too, or an actor, or, or I should say an author, because you have a book out, Acting and Television Commercials for Fun and Profit. You're telling other people how to do it. Right. When I stopped teaching, I, I sort of had a guilt feeling about leaving the teaching profession. Uh, and I basically did it because acting paid a lot more. And so I felt a little guilty about it, so I thought, gee, maybe I ought to write a book about it. So, indeed, I did. That was in 19, uh, golly, 80, and this is the third edition. It's been in 16 printings. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking about the different factors that come into play. Uh, I guess humor is certainly popular in a lot of commercials. Right. Um, but it doesn't have to be uh, necessary. It's not... I think uh, what you need to do is just uh, be aware that there's a whole uh, wealth of commercials out there and different ones that they shoot, and you want to try to get in as many as you possibly can because therein lies the residuals and therein lies uh, the profit margin. Yeah. Aren't you a little afraid if you give away all your secrets that you'll have more competition? No, I teach a lot of classes, many of them for free out here. Um my wife and I volunteer in schools five days a week, and uh, it seems that uh, you can tell people uh, a lot how to swim, but unless they actually get out there and they try it, they end up sinking. So that's... I like to help people out, and uh, you know that's basically why I wrote the book. I guess that's a, that's the inherent quality of a teacher. You have to you have to feel that way. I guess so. Yeah, and it's funny you can learn too by teaching, can't you? Right. I always wanted to spell the the old myth that uh, those that can't do it teach. <laughs> I kind of like, yeah, that's, that's been a phrase that's been around for a long time, if you can't. A myth. Yeah. If you can't do it, you teach, and if you can't teach it, then uh, you, right. do, you do it, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how it works. If anybody has a question for you, 829-2345 would be a great place to call in. You don't mind if we took a phone call or two, would you? Of course not. I've seen you selling Toyotas. I've seen you selling uh, HBO sign-ups. Yep. Um, Just about, about 1,700 television commercials. Wow. An awful lot of them. Do you, how do you approach those things? I've got, got some great questions for you because, uh, as you point out in your book, I think, and you're referring to Spencer Tracy, you're really you, and you don't really become totally another person when you're acting, right? I, mean, I think there's a lot of different ways that people act, uh, from Konstantin Stanislavski all the way over to Lee Strasberg's method, but uh, I always think that if you approach show business and you approach acting in an objective sense rather than a how you felt that day or how much you can fire your own emotions up, then you'll be a much more steady and employable actor than somebody who uh, is has that momentary gift. You know, there's a second part of the word show business, and it's called business. Uh, that's a good point. You can, uh, I suppose if you saw a show and somebody was really supposed to be emotional and get into a crying fit or a crying jag or whatever, and uh, they were left a lying heap on on the stage, that's really not acting. That's really getting into it too much, isn't it? Well, I, I, I guess for some people it may work. I always like when Laurence Olivier worked with uh, with one of our American actors uh, in a film and the fellow, a very popular guy, a very good actor, uh, in order to shoot this one sequence, stayed up for days and uh, didn't bathe and uh, uh, went with sleep deprivation and everything else. And finally, after a whole day of this of this struggle with this scene with Olivier, uh, Olivier turned and said to him, why don't you just try acting? <laughs> that was kind of nice. I kind of like that, too. I guess if you're acting, you're never really uh, forgetful. I mean, you always have to be aware of where the camera is or where the audience is, right? Right. Uh, acting, particularly in commercials, is a very technical uh, craft. You need to hit your marks. That's a, uh, a phrase that they use over and over and over in the business, whether it's on television or it's in films or it's in commercials. But in commercials, of course, it's vital 
the close-ups of the product, uh, the way you hold your hand, uh, the shadows, etc. It's extremely important that you can repeat the same action and hit the same marks over and over and over again. It's a very technical craft. So all this business that looks so natural is really uh, not all that natural, really. Well, that's an actor's job, is just to take somebody else's words and somebody else's direction and to interpret them on his own body and his own mouth and make it sound like those words and those actions are being done for the for the first time, even though maybe you've done the same thing in 300 takes. <laughs> and I, I was going to ask you that. We'll, we'll come up with some questions like that. How long does it take to get a commercial put together? How many takes? Do you ever get it right on the first take? Or is that a rarity? I don't think that's ever happened in the history of... Uh, of Anything where they just said that's it. Thanks very much. That never that never <laughs> happened. Okay, Squire Fidel is with us. We are on WJBC. It's ten uh, ten twelve in the morning. After eleven o'clock, Art Buckwald is going to be visiting with us as well. So stay with us. Are on AM twelve thirty. WJBC. By the way, if you get a chance to go out to Eastland right now too, Jim Brown is out there signing up people for the WJBC Gold Card Plus cards. <laughs> Hot summer days are coming, but you can stay cool with a train air conditioner from William Masters Incorporated and get cold, hard cash in the process. A new train air conditioner from William Masters Incorporated helps you fight off summer heat. And when you buy a train system now, you'll get that warm feeling that only cold, hard cash can provide. That's because when you buy a train air conditioner and gas furnace from William Masters Incorporated, you'll get a cash rebate of up to $350 on qualifying equipment. And, of course, you'll also get the quiet, comfortable economy you only get from trains. Your home will be comfortable, and you'll have up to $350 cash to spend any way you want. This is a great offer, but you have to hurry because it ends May 31st. For cold, hard cash to cool off hot summer days, visit William Masters Incorporated at 3010 Gill Street in Bloomington, or give them a call at 662-8481. That's 662-8481 for William Masters Incorporated, your train dealer. Because it's hard to stop a train. Honey, cleaning out the closet on a Saturday? What's the occasion? Just a little spring cleaning to make room. What's wrong with the dress with the flowers? That's a moo It's been out of style for at least 20 years. Well, you're not getting rid of my polyester, Nehru. Gone. Or the shoes I bought you? Earth shoes, 1976. Gone. Oh, next thing you'll know, you want to go to College Hills Mall to fill up the closet what again. What a great idea, Richard. We'll drop off the kids at the zoo. Uh, honey, honey, only kidding. College Hills Mall is filled with the glorious fashions of endless spring. College Hills Mall on Veterans Parkway near College Avenue, normal. 10.14 in the morning at WJBC, talking about uh, acting with Squire Friedel, primarily in uh, in uh, commercials. Is this the way a lot of people get started? I'm thinking like even Mary Tyler Moore was, uh, what was it, Mary Hot Point or something like that at one point? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, actors get started uh, doing commercials. There's uh, a lot more commercials that are shot every day all through the United States than there are feature films and television shows. So uh, you could get started uh, in your area um, working and uh, in commercials locally, do them for the local carpet store, or the local uh, car dealership, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You've seen you've seen the kind of commercials. I don't want to point at any fingers around here, but I'm sure we've we've seen some local ones that kind of shine, and other ones are kind of dull. But uh, what do you think is wrong with most of the uh, commercials? If there's anything wrong with them, why why don't they succeed? Is there a, a... well? I, we're really talking two different things. We're talking about national commercials uh, where a lot of money is spent. And we're talking about uh, very regional commercials for your local car dealer down the block. Mm -hmm. And the more money that's spent, obviously, they can take more time with everything. Um, you said that uh, during our off-air time that you shot an industrial. Yeah. And it was done in one take or two takes or whatever it was and goes awfully quickly. But if you're shooting an industrial uh, from major uh, corporation, Apple, uh, that's going to be running nationally throughout all their stores or whatever. They'll take a great deal of time to do it. I've taken, I've done commercials that have taken five days to shoot one 30-second spot, and I've shot, um, oh, ten commercials in a 24-hour period. Have you ever looked at all of them to see how you've changed from one take to another? Uh, I got older. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I guess maybe it's possible that you did your best effort right there on the first or second one, but after they had to do it 50 times to get the lighting just right or something else. Right. It's uh, always you. You can't get paranoid about the fact that you have to do it 100 times. Uh, it has a great deal to do with lighting and with sound and all the other variables. Yeah. But I'm thinking maybe in some ways it's like a good bowler. A bowler is almost like a machine. Every time he goes up to the line, he tries to throw that ball down there the same way, as I understand it. Right. But it always comes out a little bit different. Yeah. And I guess that's it's true... Uh, well, it could be a very frustrating thing, I suppose. We've all seen the outtakes, the bloopers, where somebody is going along just fine, but then they'll get to that certain point and they'll blow the line. Yeah, usually they can't show the ones, uh, most of them, because they uh, have uh, profanity in them. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, and then we are really talking expense, too, after a while. Right. Um, Commercials can be enormously expensive. Yeah. Do you have any favorites? I'm, I'm trying to think. Well, and we're going to talk about a movie that you're going to be in here, too, before long. But uh, do you have any favorite commercials or any unusual things that happened while you were shooting some of these things? Oh, geez, all sorts of things over the years. I've been taking it out, uh, out to the Grand Canyon via helicopter in strong winds uh, in below zero temperatures. Uh, I've worked with animals, and that's always hysterical because you never know what's going to happen. And Toyota, a number of years ago, when they were, uh, everybody was doing the jump, and I was the first guy that did the Toyota jump. Right. So we started shooting uh, a whole series of commercials with interesting things that would jump, and somebody got the bright idea, would you, be great to use a kangaroo? So they got a kangaroo, and they brought it in, and we were in the middle of a soundstage and discovered after the first rolling of the uh, first footage that kangaroos don't jump up. <laughs> they jump out to get away from danger. <laughs> And so this kangaroo is standing next to me, and all of a sudden, he's 40 feet away, straight ahead, not jump up. So they had to take this guy and hold his feet to a, a, uh, a tilted platform and try to get him to jump up. And this is one confused kangaroo. <laughs> and they can play, play a number with you, too, I think, with their feet or their tail or something, can't they? Yeah, I stayed pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> not a happy kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what what may happen when you're working with animals, as you say. This book is broken down into some interesting uh, interesting areas. Anything from uh, how to interpret uh, uh, what you're saying, uh, acting, as you as you point out. And I've heard this before too. Acting isn't so much acting; it's reacting in many cases, isn't it? Right. Somebody important said that. I think it was you. Uh, <laughs> well, somebody said it, but maybe they weren't so important. Yeah. Most of what my book really focuses on is what you do before you have an agent and what you do after you get an agent. Um, because getting the, the job is the difficult part. There's so much competition out there. You know, there's almost 90,000 people of Longest Screen Actors Guild, and uh, you're out there competing with an enormous number of people every time you compete, so you need to have a leg up. And what I did was, when I was writing my book, is to watch videotapes that casting directors would let me see in Los Angeles, where we lived for a long time, um, about jobs that I had auditioned for and didn't get, and jobs that I auditioned for and did get, and I got to see what all the other actors in my category did mm -hmm. in those auditions, which is pretty rare. That's actors pretty. It can be pretty demoralizing too, can it? When you see how good some of these other people are. Well, if you look at it again objectively and not just uh, uh, paranoid, but objectively, you can say, "Oh, gee, I like the way he slated. What did he do there?" And he, the, the way he what he slated. He slated into camera. Usually, uh, when they videotape your audition, uh, you say your name. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I got to see how people did that oh, I see. differently. So they're selling themselves before they even uh, do anything else. Right. Some like, people uh, just throw their name away, uh, Squire Fredell, and then they go right on thinking the acting is the important part. Right. Not really being aware that uh, maybe those first five or six seconds of the audition or being put on videotape, that's when the casting director and the client knows whether or not you're going to get a call back and eventually a job. Mm -hmm. So everybody tries to put, you know, everybody works on Act 3, when maybe you ought to work on your prologue. Yeah. How important are looks? I'm guessing you've got to have a certain look, don't you, just to be on TV? Oh, I think if you watch television commercials, uh, and you know, all of us watch TV, when you watch television commercials, you can find somebody that kind of looks like you uh, during the span of an hour. And uh, you don't have to be good-looking. You don't have to be funny-looking. You can just be sort of every man. Okay. Maybe now so... Well, I was going to say, I guess back in the, you know, I always say the back in the earlier days of Hollywood, they were always looking for the glamorous people, but they weren't all glamorous. You had your Humphrey Bogarts and your... They're looking, they're looking for people that are every man. Yeah. I have two little characters that we follow through my book, and they're called Arnold and Arlene Anybody. <laughs> kind of it. Okay. Anybody. Uh, it's, t t most of these commercials are always memorized, too. Are they not? Or do you work with cue cards a lot? Uh, you, you memorize them. Uh, you don't ever go in having your words under-memorized. It's probably... The single biggest complaint the directors and clients and casting people, because it eventually gets back to them, and then you don't work anymore, uh, have. And that is people come to the job unprepared. This is a business, just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And if you're selling an IBM typewriters or uh, Macintosh computers and you go and do a demo and you uh, aren't dressed properly or you show up and you don't have your business card, you don't show up with a proper link cable or whatever, you're not professional. The same thing is true in acting. You show for a job, your lines are memorized, You've got more than your abundant supply of wardrobe that they asked you to bring. You're on time. You look like you're supposed to look, uh, et cetera. Okay. 1021 in the morning. Squire Friedel, who I know you've recognized. You've seen him so many times on television, it's not funny. Uh, do, they try, do they ever try to disguise you sometimes so you, you're not Squire Friedel? I mean, uh, no. I, I you, you've I'm, become your own spokesperson in a way, haven't you? I mean, I'm sort of uh, 
course, with Toyota, uh, it's been going on for since 1979, so I've been very fortunate uh, with that account. But uh, most often, uh, it, you get a job because you're not identified with another product. As soon as I walk into an audition and somebody says, oh, you're the guy that does the Toyota commercials, if it's a Procter & Gamble job and I'm supposed to be an innocuous daddy, mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. Uh, there's no way in the world I'm going to get the job. The only time I've ever really been disguised is uh, for six years when I played Ronald McDonald. And I was until 1991, uh, Ronald McDonald chasing Hamburger, Hamburglar <laughs> around. Uh, See, we've learned something new. I don't know how many people knew that, but you were, the, uh, you were Ronald, huh? I was Ronald. Wow. It's uh, 1022. See, we could have said we were going to have Ronald McDonald on. <laughs> Who'd you talk to? Some clown. <laughs> 1022 in the morning at WJBC. We're talking with Squire Friedel. He has a book out called Acting in Television Commercials for Fun and Profit. I want to talk to him about his, uh, his new movie, which will be out, too, before much longer. In fact, yet this month, is that right? I wouldn't call it my movie. <laughs> it's more like uh, Chris Reeves and Kirstie Alley's movie. Oh, okay. But you are in it, right? I am in it. I, I... You're, in a, you're in a commercial in the movie, is that it? No, no, I get to play a real character. All right, we'll talk in a minute. To help, to give aid, as in helping... Webster has a definition for assist, but not for assisted defense. living. But to Westminster help. Village does. Assisted living, an independent lifestyle, companionship, structured activities, three meals a day, daily homemaker services. Under the Westminster Village new assisted living program, those who need only assistance with daily tasks can maintain an independent lifestyle while taking advantage of special services determined by their need. Laundry services, security, transportation. Assisted living, as defined by Westminster Village, McLean County's continuing care retirement community creates peace of mind for you and your family. Cost-efficient use. And assisted living offers a tremendous savings when compared with nursing home costs. To learn more about assisted living as defined by Westminster Village, call 663-6474. It may be one of the most comforting calls you'll ever make. 663-6474. Great drink specials all night long. A free food buffet from 4 till 7. And the best oldies music in the Twin Cities played by a professional DJ. Find all three this Wednesday night at Bombay Bicycle Club. But Bombay Bicycle Club has more than just super low prices on drinks, a free buffet, and excellent oldies music from 6 till 10. They're also featuring the Shrimply Maddening Dinner Special. A little wild, a little crazy, and a lot of fun. It's Wednesday night at Bombay Bicycle Club on Veterans Parkway between Washington and Eastland Drive. The lot is full, the prices are low, so smiling Steve Peterson, sales manager at Denison Used Car Center, says get down. Get down, get down. Uh, wrong kind of get down. When Smiling Steve says get down, he means head over, make tracks, stop by, save money on luxury autos, four-wheel drive, sports cars, minivans, compacts, and more. Get down. Oh, I get the idea. Get down the line. Trying to do. Sorry, Denison Used Car Center, four blocks north of Veterans Parkway on Morrissey Drive. 1025 in the morning at uh, WJBC. Something different. I think that's what they probably say a lot out in Hollywood, don't they? We're looking for something a little bit different when they, when they don't particularly want you in their commercial. Would you agree, Squire? Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the excuses that uh, they tried not to hire you. Yeah. And, now, you're very, very successful at it. Uh, you've still known what it's like to be rejected, certainly, because you don't get every part, right? Yeah, I think acting is, uh, is a business of rejecting, uh, of rejection, and uh, out of... I think during the heyday, um, when I was auditioning on both coasts, New York and in Los Angeles, because we had a place on both coasts, uh, I was getting about one out of every seven auditions. So that's six times that people say, no thanks, we don't want you, well, we don't like you. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, if, if you're uh, heavily involved in the business, uh, as an ego performer, I think it can be quite crushing. Yeah. So, uh, There's a lot of times, though, you just don't even get auditions, right? you got to be certain. You have, you, or can anybody get an audition? You need an agent to get an audition? How does it work? Uh, it all depends on the market. Uh, a larger market like Chicago, uh, that you're close to, or uh, San Francisco, or Los Angeles, certainly, or New York, certainly, Miami, uh, all of those areas, you need to have uh, an agent. And there are lists of agents uh, in the back of my book. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you can call your local unit of Screen Actors Guild. There's one in Chicago. And you can ask them for a list of agents in the area. This and, uh, usually they charge you a buck or a couple of bucks, and they'll mail it out to you, and you can uh, start on your road to commercialdom. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to me. We've had quite a few people who have gone into the acting profession from Illinois State University, for instance, Laurie Metcalf on Roseanne and uh, Gary Cole and uh, John Malkovich uh, was uh, at ISU for a while. Right. I did a, a midnight caller with Gary Cole. Very nice fellow. 
yeah. Uh, but this is really a good book. If anybody's listening out there, any of the students at ISU or Illinois Wesleyan, uh, they may be interested in a book like this, Acting in Television Commercials for Fun and Profit by Squire Friedel. The name of the movie, we only have a minute or so left, The Village of the Damned will be out. And uh, tell me about that. This is, your, is this your first feature film? No, I've done five biggies. All are uh, unmemorable. Hopefully this is, uh, will not be. For trivia, what were those other ones? Uh... Well, uh, Slim Pickens and Phyllis Diller in the Pink Motel. That was a dandy. Who? Uh, did one called Miracles with Tom Conti and Terry Garr. Um, one called Mac and Me. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, it had something to do with McDonald's, didn't it? Yeah, uh, the you know, alien type uh, thing. I didn't yeah. play the alien, though. You played Ronald. I played Ronald in that one. <laughs> okay. And uh, in, in this film, it's a remake of the 1960 George Saunders film uh, by John Carpenter, who's a terrific director. And uh, Chris Reeves and Kirstie Alley, Mark Hamill are in it. And uh, Squire Friedel is the burly sheriff. The neatest part is I got to get killed on camera. You know, normally when you're sort of a white bread guy like I am, uh, you sort of play the either the husband or the guy next door or the sort of a semi-hero. This time I got to, I get to get machine gunned. And it was absolutely great. They put these little squibby packs all over you. Mm-hmm. And then this guy with a big electric board uh, blows your chest off. It's just great. <laughs> Were you a little leery about this? Very excited about this one. <laughs> it is. My dad gets blown up. <laughs> yes. So uh, you get to play not a burly sheriff. You're not a big guy, are you? Well, they, uh, the, when I read for the, when I was re- reading for the part, it, it said burly sheriff. Uh-huh. And the uh, director's wife, a terrific lady named Sandy, uh, I had worked with on a film a long time ago um, with Billy Crystal called, um, I forgot the name of it, I forgot the name of it, it was a long time ago. That's anyway, right. she had worked with me on the film in Las Vegas, and uh, when she saw the audition tape, she said, oh, Squire, golly, I remember him, he was always on time, and he was a pretty good actor, and showed up knowing his lines, and let's hire him. Mm-hmm. So you got the part. thing that what uh, goes around has indeed come around before, so you need to make sure that you leave a nice trail of, uh, of good work. Yeah, don't burn your bridges. Don't burn any bridges. The industry is too small. <laughs> Listen, it's great to talk to you. I want to wish you all the luck in the world with the book and with the, with the career. It's certainly, uh, I don't think you need it, but uh, well, I guess everybody needs it, don't they? Everybody needs it. Yeah. Squire, thanks. Acting in television commercials for fun and profit is out. You should be able to find that in any bookstore, I would think. It's put out by Crown. I would think so. All right. Well, good. I hope we get to talk down the road again sometime. Okay. Nice talking to you, Ken. Same here. Bye-bye. Squire Friedel. 1029, we have news for you in just a minute.